Namaskaram. I'm, uh, I'm Raghav from Bombay. Yes. And, uh, my question is uh, regarding Vairagya, uh, dispassion versus uh, something so mere as boredom. Uh, if you could just throw a little light on that. Vairagya is a word that is used in many, many contexts. If it is used in the context of boredom, then there is absolutely no similarity in these two states. Vairagya is more a state of detachment, involved yet detached. Boredom is a state of not being involved, not wanting to be involved, refusing involvement and giving in to a state of what one would call tamas. It's a conceptual tamas, boredom. It happens because the person is not tuned in, is not aligned with what is happening here and now. And there is an expectation which is not fulfilled. And when that expectation, which is a conceptual expectation, is not fulfilled, then that's what happens, then it's called boredom. It is a conceptual state, because the person is not tuned in to what is happening now, and is always in a state of expectation. And vairagya, in the context of boredom, is detachment but with involvement. Like you have Shmashana Vairagya, that is when you're there in the cremation ground and some family member is being cremated, uh, you experience Shmashana Vairagya, it means a detachment, an involvement with life but a detachment conceptually because you're confronted with your own transience, with your own mortality, and so it puts you in a state of detachment from the idea that living continues forever. And it brings you into this moment, and that is another example of that. So boredom only happens when there is expectation which is not fulfilled. And it's conceptual, it's not emotional, it's not material, physical, it's not transformative in nature. It's a conceptual experience. So it's very limited. Um, it's, it's the repetitive monotony uh, of situations that keep arising, which... Uh, it's not boredom in the sense that I don't feel like doing anything or I'm, uh, you know, not interested in doing anything. No, it's, it's just the repetitiveness of situations in different forms. Uh, that you're facing, uh, like today, for example, this, now tomorrow, this, now day after tomorrow, I know I'll go home and this and that. It's just endlessly uh, going on, you know? <laughs> if your system is most of the time in the conceptual, if you're thinking most of the time and planning your life with thinking and responding by analyzing circumstances and reaching conclusions and acting on those conclusions, if you spend your time thinking things through and making inferences and acting from those inferences, there is this experience of repetition. The same things happening again and again. This person shouting, that person crying, the third person bored, the fourth person. The movies even are repeating their themes. Everything becomes boring and repetitive. If you switch the compass, and you start to live this life in surrender, not assuming that you can organize your life and control it through thinking, but that you move into a state of surrender and go with the truth impulse, refusing the ego. Because the ego convinces you that you can know something through thinking. You cannot know through thinking. You can plan, but you cannot know. So, knowing comes when there is surrender in the system. So, as you move into that state of surrender, 
what actually happens is that the consciousness starts to expand. You're not anymore only in the conceptual and the emotional dancing between these two from morning to night, year after year, but you start to you start to expand into a supra-conceptual state, into a transformative state, where the occult experiences happen, and you also expand downward into the materiality of your body. That is, if you don't leave the system through meditation, through long hours of meditation, if you're present, it starts to expand within the system. So, as this consciousness expands, you start to you start to observe this world around you differently. It starts to reveal the mystery that is going on, the magic that is going on. As the consciousness expands beyond the conceptual into that transformative state, which is the occult state, suddenly you start to make all these associations. You start to see things you never saw before. You start to understand why this happened and that happened, why the other happened. And you start to see that it is an unfolding magic, a transformative unfolding magic, a matrix of perfection unfolding. Namaskar. So, as that expansion is happening, you are actually starting to see this whole world like thousands of crystals lighting up. I can't, I don't know how to put it in another way. How can you be bored then? Where is there a single moment to be bored? You understand? So, the process of reaching that without going into cosmic experience... So, the process of doing that is a gradual one, but it results from bending down and being in surrender and going with the truth impulse, refusing the ego, no, 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 just the truth, the truth, the truth, and you act from that truth, and then gradually you start to see things happening around you that you never saw before, and the movie becomes real, but you are in the movie. It is not that you are observing life, you are living life in a very vibrant and very real state. So then how can there be any boredom whatsoever? It is because you're continuously allowing the ego to determine your life. And that is why that's happening. 